días a todos. Uh, discúlpame, voy a presentar en inglés porque aprendí mi español, mi castellano en Perú. Y ciertas palabras, frases tienen diferentes sentidos en diferentes países. Y, por ejemplo, algo para picar me da problemas. So, anyway, um, also I, another reason I, I would like to speak in English is I don't know how to say stacked boiling systems in Spanish. Um, I don't know how to start my presentation. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so El Oro, I would guess that about 50% of the people here already know more than I do about El Oro. Everybody that's worked in Mexico for a long time, it's very well known. And probably 95% of you know more than I do about low sulfidation systems. So I'll do my best today to make sure you leave here knowing a little bit more about our low sulfidation system at El Oro and the stacked boiling system. Eight million ounce gold equivalent is quite a, quite a production from two veins. The veins were up to 40 meters wide and, and they mined them only an average of 200 meters depth. So that was very attractive to us as an exploration target. Um, you can see that we're located 110 kilometers northwest of Mexico City in an area that's um, easy to get to, easy accessible. It's in the mountains, it's very fresh air and people that know mining um, with the historic area, it was historic work, but also um, a lot of tourism in the area, but people are very friendly towards mining. And they know they had, their ancestors had a very good life with mining and um, it's all underground anyway, so. Um, here you can see the infrastructure, um, road work and such, so. As I mentioned, his, one of Mexico's most historic gold producers at the turn of the century is actually North America's largest gold producer, a um, million dollars a month in revenues. So very significant, but it also has very significant silver production. And the 200 meters vertical, very significant. That was the average depth mined. So the question was, is there anything left? And of course, we think there's lots left, especially because of the stacked boiling systems that, that we've seen here. Um, so with our work, we've extended a long strike. The, some of the veins, especially San Rafael, which was the biggest producer. San Rafael produced 4 million ounces gold and 44 million ounces silver. We believe we've found vertical cross-cutting uh, structures which are controlling the high grades, which is one of the real keys to finding more resources and significant discovery. We still have the potential for discovery of new veins. We have also developed 31 new targets away from the known veins. And there is a potential remnant re, um, mineralization. I would call it a resource, but I can't prove it's mineable. So by 43101 rules, I can't call it a resource. Although Luisman, their work did call it a historic resource. Here you can see um, over here, San Rafael vein, as I mentioned, five million ounce gold equivalent and Veda Verde, three million ounce gold equivalent. Those are found, underground, found um, blind. There was one area that was um, a one window of the veins showing, but otherwise it's all hidden by younger volcanics. To the west, uh, the, the Spaniards did mine in the 1500s and those veins are exposed. That was predominantly silver production. Mining history showed, um, as I mentioned, the Spaniards in the 1500s, most of the significant mining up until 1925 in San Rafael. After that, Dos Estrellas took over, and since 1937, very little um, mining in the area. And we do own the whole district because Luisman put it all together and we optioned it from um, what became Gold Corp and recently um, managed to acquire the rest of it, so we now own 100%. Here's the regional geology. Um, the bedrock, the, the host rock to most of the veins are these late Cretaceous marine sediments, um, lutites and, and tophaceous rocks. And then the mineralization came in about 27 million years ago, and I'm assuming related to the rhyolite phases here. So you can see to the east, all covered by the younger volcanics, to the west, more exposed. And there's about 50 known veins and then a little more detail. San Rafael actually had three mines operating on the one vein. And we do have a tailings opportunity coming off the Mexico mine there. And then Veda Verde. So Veda Verde, we have access from, from the west to the east, the Dos Estrellas tunnel. They actually drove that blind um, 
and I think it took them over a year to drive it, and dr maybe even two years. And when they hit the vein, they paid it off within one month because they just happened to hit a bonanza zone, so they're very lucky. Some of the history of drilling here, you can see many, many different groups took a look at the project. We took one, we took it over, we were able to take on a lot of um, targets developed by Placer Dome that they had not managed to drill yet on, off of the Vulcan model. But um, most of the drilling was looking for new veins around and then Luisman concentrated on what I called the remnant area. And you can see there's a lot of uh, good great still left in that, and that's why they came up with a historic resource. So that's um, backfill, pillars, and just vein left in place, because the vein is, it's actually documented up to 70 meters wide, but we can substantiate 40 meters where we tried to cross the vein and supported backfill in some of our underground workings. So um, the remnant mineralization is in this area here. It's, there aren't the records for, we don't have the records for the northern area of the vein, so just in here is where this um, exploration target um, is, is developed. As I say, I can't prove that's mineable, so it's very interesting. It should be looked at, but we're concentrating on the exploration for new, new zones in San Rafael or new veins. And... Um, so I already mentioned the, these veins, but what we did when we first came in is we drilled underneath all four main veins and with fluid inclusion work and, and certain geochemistry and, and just grades, we were able to prove that none of the systems were dead at depth. So the gold and silver continued at depth. So that was our first work. And at that time we were actually had the project in our Candente Resource Corp. We had a copper project in Peru and this project, which we only were earning in with another company from Gold Corp. Uh, the copper project took our attention, so we actually didn't do any more work. We started this 2006-2007 uh, and then came back in 2010 when we spun out Candente Gold Corp as a separate company. And between 2010 and 2012, we did most of our drilling. So in 2011, we intersected significant high-grade zones in several different veins and in overlying volcanic tufts. And that was, for me, when we started getting a handle on, on the controls here that we needed to understand. We did earn 70% from Gold Corp in May of 2012. And by January this year, we got 100%. So very recently, we now own 100% of the project. I'm very happy about that. In the meantime, um, after we did our drilling and, and trying to understand, having tested all of Placer's holes, we really sat back for a couple of years and did huge data compilation, built a 3D model, um, did uh, Aster structural image uh, interpretation, looked at the geochem. We also worked on a tailings opportunity. We did develop a resource there. We have 120,000 ounces gold, 3 million ounces silver, and we've optioned it to Sun River Gold to, um, for them to help us try and figure out how to recover it because standard leaching didn't work for us. So that's an opportunity. So here, we drilled underneath the old workings as nobody else had done before, because Luisman had done all their drilling here. That's where the, that exploration target or their remnant resource was. Um, we drilled up to 500 meters below old workings and were able to prove that the gold-silver system continues. We didn't come up with a lot of high grade over huge widths, um, except in this area. And, and the widths aren't as large as, as normal, but the grades are very good. Um, but what we did is we showed that the system isn't dead, and there are base metals coming in, but we, we feel there's evidence of stacked boiling system here. So it's a repeated system within the same vein, same as at Juan Escipio and Guanajuato and uh, Pachuca and many other systems in Mexico. This particular area here, I'm going to show you some cross sections. That's where we found very significant. We got high grade in the San Rafael when we finally we're able to intersect it. We do lose a lot of holes in old workings here. And um, above that, we also got high grades in several other, well, a couple of other veins, but several intersections. And then we also got um, the best grades we've ever seen in the Samara Tuf. We have a gram over 75 meters, and that's the only place we get that kind of grade. So that was my first indication that maybe there's something vertical going on here as far as controls that's cross-cutting the veins. And that's what you see here. So our holes are collared um, to be perpendicular to the veins. Good mineralization in all those holes in the volcanic tufts, um, but also high grade in the San Rafael when we intersected it, and high grades in two other veins, so up to 30 grams and 18 grams 
in these two other veins, which were known by old timers and, and some mining done. But we, the fact that we got high grades in all, everything we intersected here was very significant to me and, and said, I think something vertical cross-cutting is going on here. So then we also looked at the fact that we get budding tonight in the Samara Tooth. And Peter McGaw, who's worked with us and was on our board at, for some time, he I, advised me that that's what they used um, to discover one Scipio. And the fact that it's sitting here, that's your center cap, so the top of your system, it's too close. It should be two, two minimum 200 meters to 350 meters above your actual high grade zone. He feels it's too close to what we know of San Rafael, therefore it's indicating something deeper. And so that's why we're very keen to be drilling again in here, but probably at a different angle because we drilled perpendicular to the veins and we now understand there's cross-cutting controls to high grade, which are also perpendicular to the veins, which means we drilled parallel to them, which is not what you want to do. Um, and again, you, this is the idea of a stacked boiling system. So that would be the top of the system that produced what's been mined out of San Rafael and what might be left in that particular boiling zone. And then there's, there's the new top here and another should be another boiling zone down there. So 3D modeling, we thought it was really important to get a handle, to help us get a handle on the high grade controls. So we set out to uh, create a 3D model. Uh, as I mentioned, Placer had created one, but we didn't have it. So we thought it was better to build our own. Um, and then we did have, based on 914 level plans, so a lot of data in the area where we were able to create the model. And um, only 1.2 kilometer of the San Rafael vein was modeled. And it's actually the lower grade end of the, the vein. But and it doesn't matter. It helps us understand distribution of high grades and, and widths. And so the model area, just to remind you, is right here. And um, so that's the model. And so the, the grade is, uh, the pink is greater than 25 grams. The lowest, of course, is less than 0.1. But, a, but most of it, as you see here, is between 5 and to 25 grams. So that's the distribution. This is another vein that's, that's parallel to San Rafael, but it's on the same section. That's the way the old timers plotted it. And then for the widths, again, the purple here is greater than 35 meters wide. And the red is 15 to 35. So very, very wide veins. And that's how they can be so prolific. Um, then we did our Aster uh, structural analysis. And that's when we came up with many things, um, the, these um, extensional, trans, extensional faults. And I assume you can all read this slide from the back there, can you? OK, good. I hate reading slides to people. Um, but what was really significant for me here was these new um, east-northeast um, that were found. And that's what we believe is, is controlling the, the high grade, um, yeah, controls to the high grade. So that, that's the most significant thing for me out of all this, although all of this helps us do our exploration and look for more targets. But this was the, the, the um, backup I needed to say that there is something cross-cutting the veins here. And, um, so that was excellent for me. Um, and so we're looking at the whole district, and we call it the blind El Oro district because the most prolific veins are hidden by the younger volcanics. So we look at the setting, we look at the deposit, um, alteration, um, and uh, base metal ratios, fluid inclusion. I'm not going to read this all to you, but this is the homework we've done to much better understand it. And then the controls for the gold and silver, and again, where they're occurring 27 million years. Um, so very significant that it does have some um, typical low sulfidation geochemistry. Uh, we do have both a gold rich event and a silver rich event, so two different events, let alone the uh, stacked boiling system events. And then the structure, the, the um, uh, classic textures, jigsaw, quartz adularia veins. Uh, coliform, agillaria, and bladed cal calcite after quartz, which the high grades are not always with, but, but sometimes are. Native gold and silver at upper levels, so probably oxidized. Multiple brecciation and illite smectite in halos and advanced argillic alteration above the San Rafael, as I mentioned, the budding tonight in the ignimbrite. And then localized quartz vein valence with uh, breccias and stockwork and chalcedony. Um, larger mining widths we have related to extensive fault controlled transverse 
uh, silica breaches. And then the targets that we've developed, new targets, uh, really depend on the, uh, you know, what, what is the lithology at the, in certain areas, structures, and hydrothermal controls to mineralization. And then um, the fact that San Rafael and Ver Verde um, are related to cyanite um, and rhyolite um, intrusions and such and uh, Goldrich Stockworks, and then this area, Cortadoris, which is to the west, is a very um, just v wide area of, I'm not going to call it disseminated, but it's uh, blasted with stockwork. So it's a lower grade, but bulk tonnage style target. We also did a lot of geochem. So we did, of course, gold, uh, gold geochem and silver geochem. We did all the elements, you know, 32 elements, but I'm just showing you the gold and silver. So. Putting that together with the Aster image work, um, and then of course the geology, uh, we came up with 31 new exploration targets. And those are based on lithology, alterations, major structures, and then um, you know where are they near intrusions or um, doming and such. And so we've done extensive amount of work and we haven't tested any of these targets yet. And that's our top 10 targets. Uh, we also have the tailings opportunity, as I mentioned. Uh, we do have a 43101 resource on that because w there was previous drilling. And even though we didn't re-drill it, we did auger sampling down to four meters. And we were able to confirm grades. So by 43101, it's a resource. We did a bunch of test work um, on a leaching basis, some agitated leach, some extra crushing, and that didn't work. So we did the deal with Sun River Gold. They have the opportunity to earn 51% interest um, by providing certain payments, but also providing an innovative recovery technology. They have come up with some good results. Um, we believe more test work is needed, but they certainly have some encouraging um, ideas on, on how to process the tailings. And that would be nice for some cash flow while we're um, looking for money to be exploring. The, the bigger opportunity here, of course, is the another 8 million ounce gold equivalent for us. And um, that's about working at El Oro. Of course, we are not underground like that anymore without hard hats and clothes and uh, boots. But um, calculated risk and perseverance is what these camps need. So that I'll take questions now. And hopefully I can answer. Excuse me, a question about the east uh, northeast structures. I, I assume that they are veins. Uh, and uh, do they crop out uh, at La Pujawa? We haven't identified them outcropping, no. Um, and I believe they're, they'd be um, a structure that's allowing fluid uh, control, but I don't know that there's an actual vein, per se. It might be more brecciation. And uh, another question. Uh, this is the first time I heard about cyanides in that part of the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt, so it's quite interesting. Is uh, Shoshonitic or with feldes feldespatoids? Or? I honestly don't know. Uh, I'm, uh, thank uh, you. No, I don't know that. <laughs> um, but we do have a 200-page 43101 report that gives a lot of detail back up on all of this. It's on our website. It's also on CEDAR. So that might give you more information. But if you email me, I can talk to the geologists that did this detailed work and find out. Joanne. Yes. Okay. You know, when Placer Dome got into the project, they were looking for a home run. They were looking for another Veta Verde or San Rafael. And I don't know if you have full access to their data, but they did some exploration going specifically to the east under the thick post mineral cover, soil gas geochem. And they developed some anomalies that you could convince yourself could reflect a structure at depth. 
but quite honestly, they became afraid to drill it, and when Placer Dome left, they hadn't tested those ideas. Do you know if those ideas are still considered valid, and have they been tested? We did test some of Pl uh, several of Placer's targets because Mark Pryor worked with us, and, and he was able to bring the targets. We didn't get their Vulcan model, so we didn't get a lot of the, the backup data, but we did have the actual targets, and we did um, some series of drilling in the Oriente area, which... If I can um, put the slide back on, I'll show you where that is. Um, but in any case, it's east of, of the known veins. Um, the problem with our drilling there was that it wasn't very well controlled, and I believe we, um, we had a lot of spiraling. And so we drilled one hole that was 900 meters and had excellent alteration, but it didn't get the target. Now there is, is some vein, some stock work zoning, outcropping, we call it the Andrea vein in the Oriente area, and that was our target, uh, as well as we also did CSMAT and put together with what Mark knew. Um, I don't remember having the soil gas geochem, but I would say Oriente needs to be better tested. Um, I will say one... One of our strategies in this exploration, when we first did our deal with Goldcorp, um, it was very interesting. Ian Telfer had, it wasn't Goldcorp yet, it was Wheaton River Minerals. They had just bought Luisman for the Tita mine. Ian Telfer didn't like exploration, so they were um, getting juniors to take on all their exploration projects. We were one of seven junior companies that was chosen to compete for the project. The deal was the deal, we couldn't change that, but we had to compete in an exploration contest, so to speak. Um, we won that. I guess they believed we were the most likely, and it wasn't me, it was Larry Cornsey and Michael Castleman, but to find, the most likely to find millions of ounces. So they had, of course, a very stiff back in right. So our exploration strategized how to not let them, not have them back in to some degree. So we did enough work in Oriente that we, we were obligated to do, but we would like to do a lot more there. And I, but I haven't presented that here because uh, it's some of those 31 targets. But um, for me right now, understanding, the first place I'd like to go back drilling is where I showed you at the border between Esperanza, Mexico mines, where we've got so many high grades in so many different veins and the low, you know, disseminated in the Samaritan. That for me, if we, can un if we can drill enough holes there to find a very good um, new ore body, then we'll understand the, the camp and then we can go from there. But um, yeah, lots of targets have been developed here. Lots still to be done. Yeah. As I told you, a lot of people here know a lot more about El Oro than I do. We have seven minutes left. Although we're, we're over time by the main schedule. I guess no more questions. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you.